Hey everyone, and welcome back to Reading for Fluency. Today we're going to work on chapter 34. And I know a lot of you have been messaging me saying, Chris, where's the next chapter? Well, here it is. Let's do it. I'm curious to see what happens to Stanley and Zero. I hope Zero's okay. Here we go. The sun was almost directly overhead. He figured he could walk for no more than another hour, maybe two, before he had to turn back. Had to turn back. Had to. Had to turn back. You hear that? T -t -t -t. Had to turn back. Fluency. Before he had to turn back, it seemed pointless. He could see there was nothing ahead of him. Nothing but emptiness. He was hot, tired, hungry, and, most of all, thirsty. Maybe he should just turn around now. Maybe he'd already gone halfway, and he didn't know it. Then, looking around, he saw a pool of water less than a hundred yards away from where he was standing. He closed his eyes and opened them to make sure he wasn't imagining it. Imagining it. The pool was still there. He hurried to it. The pool hurried away from him, moving as he moved, stopping when he stopped. A mirage? Hmm. There wasn't any water. It was a mirage caused by the shimmering waves of heat rising off the dry ground. He kept walking. He still carried the empty sack of sunflower seeds. He didn't know if he might find something to put it in. To put in it. Oh, to put in it. <laughs> I was like, to put it in? That's weird. Okay, let's read it back. The sun was almost directly overhead. He figured he could walk no more than another hour, maybe two, before he had to turn back. It seemed pointless. He could see there was nothing ahead of him, nothing but emptiness. He was tired, hot, hungry, and most of all, thirsty. Maybe he should just turn around now. Maybe he'd already gone halfway and didn't know it. Then, looking around, he saw a pool of water less than a hundred yards away from where he was standing. He closed his eyes and opened them to make sure he wasn't imagining it. The pool was still there. He hurried toward it. The pool hurried away from him, moving as he moved, stopping when he stopped. There wasn't any water. It was a mirage caused by the shimmering waves of heat rising off the dry ground. He kept walking. He still carried the empty sack of sunflower seeds. He didn't know if he might find something to put in it. <laughs> Remember, we're not reading for speed anymore. We're reading for meaning, for feeling, for inflections and all of that kind of stuff. We want to sound dynamic, and that's really important when it comes to speaking, is we learn how to speak quickly and form our thoughts fast, but then, then we slow down and we become skilled and fluent at how we deliver our message. See that? I slowed down because it was an important point. Ah, okay, let's keep going. After a while, he thought he could make out the shape of the mountains through the haze. At first, he wasn't sure if it was another kind of mirage. But the farther he walked, the clearer they became. Every time. The clearer they came into a view. Almost straight ahead of him, he could see what looked like a fist with its thumb sticking up. Oh, He didn't know how far away it was. Five miles, fifty miles. One thing was certain. It was more than halfway. He kept walking toward it. Although, he didn't know why. He knew he'd have to turn around before he got there. But every time he looked at it, it seemed to encourage him, giving him the thumbs up sign. As he continued walking, he became aware of a large object on the lake. He couldn't tell what it was or even if it was natural or man-made. It looked like a little... Nope. <laughs> nope. It looked a little like a fallen tree, although it didn't seem likely that a tree would grow here. More likely, it was a ridge of dirt or rocks. The object, whatever it was, was not on the way to Big Thumb, but off to the right. He tried to decide whether to go to it or continue towards Big Thumb, or maybe just turn around. There was no point in heading towards Big Thumb. He decided he would never make it. For all he knew, it was like chasing the moon. But he could make out 
he could man, he could make it to the mysterious object. He changed directions. He doubted it was anything, but the fact that there was something in the middle of all this nothing made it hard for him to pass up. He decided to make the object his halfway point, and he hoped he hadn't already gone too far. Do you see how those words are italicized? They're slanty, right? Those are where we change how we say the words. Let's read it back for fluency and listen again to see how I say those words specifically. Here we go. <laughs> After a while, he thought he could make out the shape of the mountains through the haze. At first, he wasn't sure if this was another kind of mirage, but the farther he walked, the clearer they came into view. Almost straight ahead of him, he could see what looked like a fist with its thumb sticking up. He didn't know how far away it was. Five miles? Fifty miles? One thing was certain. It was more than halfway. He kept walking towards it, although he didn't know why. He knew he'd have to turn around before he got there. But every time he looked at it, it seemed to encourage him, giving him the thumbs up sign. Hmm. As he continued walking, he became aware of a large object on the lake. He couldn't tell what it was or even if it was natural or man-made. It looked a little like a fallen tree, although it didn't seem likely that a tree would grow here. More likely, it was a ridge of dirt or rocks. The object, whatever it was, was not on the way to Big Thumb, but off to the right. He tried to decide whether to go to it or continue to Big Thumb, toward Big Thumb, or maybe just turn around. There was no point in heading toward Big Thumb. He decided he would never make it. For all he knew, it was like chasing the moon, but he could make it to the mysterious object. He changed directions. He doubted it was anything, but the fact that there was something in the middle of all this nothing made it hard for him to pass up. He decided to make the object his halfway point, and he hoped he hadn't already gone too far. See that? Something nothing. We're emphasizing it. The italicized words are for emphasis. They have more meaning than just the word. Let's finish this chapter. The microphone's in the way. <laughs> he laughed to himself when he saw what it was. It was a boat, or part of a boat anyway. It struck him as funny to see a boat in the middle of this dry, barren wasteland. But after all, he realized this was once a lake. The boat lay upside down, half buried in the dirt. Someone may have drowned here, he thought grimly. Mm. At the same spot where he could very well die of thirst. The name of the boat had been painted on the back. The upside down, <gasps> the upside down red letters were peeled and faded, but Stanley could still read the name Mary Lou. Oh, you know who Mary Lou is, right? Remember the donkey? Mm. On one side of the boat, there was a pile of dirt and then a tunnel leading down below the boat. The tunnel looked big enough for a good-sized animal to crawl through. He heard a noise. Something stirred under the boat. It was coming out. Hey! Stanley, nah. hey! Stanley shouted, hoping to scare it back inside. His mouth was very dry and it was hard to shout very loudly. Hey, the thing answered weakly. Then a dark hand and an orange sleeve reached up out of the tunnel. <gasps> what happened? Let's read it back. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Nah, get ready. He laughed to himself when he saw what it was. It was a boat, or part of a boat anyways. It struck him as funny to see a boat in the middle of this dry and barren wasteland. But after all, he realized this was once a lake. The boat lay upside down, upside down, hmm. half buried in the dirt. Someone may have drowned here, he thought grimly, at the same spot where he would very well die of thirst. <sighs> the name on the boat had been painted on the back. The upside down red letters were peeled and faded, but Stanley could still read the name Mary Lou. On one side of the boat, there was a pile of dirt and then a tunnel leading down the boat. Down the... Keep screwing up. <laughs> Mistakes are okay, remember. Where was I? One side of the boat, there was a pile of dirt, and then a tunnel leading down below the boat. 
The tunnel looked big enough for a good-sized animal to crawl through. He heard a noise. Something stirred under the boat. It was coming out. Hey! Stanley shouted, hoping to scare it back inside. His mouth was very dry, and it was hard to shout loudly. Hey! The thing answered weakly. Then a dark hand in an orange sleeve reached up out of the tunnel. <gasps> Did we find him? We'll have to wait for the next chapter. <laughs> I hope you had fun with this. I did too. I'm going to film the next chapter, but I'm not going to share it yet. Not yet. <laughs> See you for the next lesson. Bye.